with negative headlines about rates, um, just overall kind of negativity about the real estate market. But 2023 is one of the best years that I can remember for opportunities in real estate investing. You're listening to Alternative Investor Mastermind, where we do a deep dive on alternative investment opportunities and the lifestyle it can create. Join Jack Krupe as he presents actionable tips and tricks in doing passive real estate away from mainstream strategies. Go beyond the usual fix and flips and try less explored yet rewarding investing ventures from multifamily properties, mobile homes to cryptocurrencies. Do not miss this opportunity to escape traditional assets and finally create wealth without Wall Street. Now your host, Jack. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the 2024 kickoff episode of the Alternative Investor Mastermind. I'm your host, Jack Krupe, and uh, I'm all bundled up here because I am in Porto, Portugal. Um, went over here to uh, spend uh, New Year's and uh, had a great time, uh, visited some friends, saw a lot of the country, uh, but uh, it is pretty cold compared to Puerto Rico. So, um, Caught a cold for a few days, but uh, overall uh, feeling good and uh, really enjoying the, the the lifestyle and the flexibility that uh, passive uh, investing has uh, has afforded me. So, um, this episode we're going to talk uh, talk about a uh, couple things that uh, that I'm doing to start off 2024. Uh, somewhat of a year in review and uh, really uh, just some key steps to to looking at your portfolio. Uh, how I'm looking at my portfolio and uh, how I'm thinking about um, um, you know calculating and, and figuring out investments moving forward in, in 2024. So um, first things first, I want to do a little recap of the uh, stock market because I feel like every time we have uh, uh, an up year in the market, uh, people have short memories and and sometimes it uh, it affects their decision making um, and and sometimes uh, I just don't uh, I don't necessarily think people see the math and uh, really, really do the math the way it should be done. So um, we go back two years as an example. Uh, 2022, the S&P was down 18%. And uh, in 2023, it rebounded 24.8%. Um, so let, let's look at $100,000. If you had $100,000 in the market in the beginning of 2022, at the end of 2022, it was down to $82,000. Now, these are simple examples. I know I preach a lot of dollar cost averaging, but uh, um, just using simple math here to, to drive home the point. Now, in 2023, the market was up, the S&P was up 24.8%. So if you take that 100,000 in 2022, it drops to 82,000. You make a 24.8% return, you're actually at 102,336. So that's over two years, you've really only made 2.3%. Uh, um, if there's dividends, maybe you add another couple percent for dividends, but it, it's far below that 8 to 10% average that, uh, that some who preach the, you know, the efficient market theory um, would preach. Now, NASDAQ was down 33.4% in uh, 2022. So if you had $100,000 in NASDAQ, you lost 33.4,000, which actually works out to 666. You have $66,600 to start 2023. And uh, the NASDAQ had a big year. It was up 53.8%. I mean, the NASDAQ is a lot more volatile. So again, after that entire year, after that entire two-year period, you'd have $102,430. That's assuming just taking the beginning of the year, beginning of 22 to the end of 2023. So for those that are scared about real estate or, or see negative headlines about real estate or, or see uh, a few of the, the syndications that, uh, you know, that made big headlines for being in trouble, uh, overall, real estate didn't have that bad of a year. A couple things I'm doing to start the year right here. I'm actually looking at all of my accounts and uh, you know, I've got a, a pretty massive spreadsheet and uh, I look through my brokerage accounts. I do uh, still hold some... Uh, some stocks, some treasuries. Uh, it's mostly just a place to park money until I find, uh, um, you know, interesting real estate deals or invest more through, you know, through our series of funds. But, uh, you know, I do have, uh, you know, some money, some money parked, uh, in those accounts. So, you know, I am looking at the overall accounts. I'm looking at, uh, 
um, where my concentrations are and, and just doing a little bit of that traditional, um, you know, kind of traditional portfolio management. And, uh, you know, I have a, a fair amount of, of cash flowing and dividend producing, uh, uh, stocks as well. So I like, I look at that concentration and really look at the, what our goals are at this stage in, in my life, uh, you know, um, living off of investments. So, um, tracking, tracking cash flow. What was the actual cash flow for the year? What is my projected cash flow for next year and balancing that, uh, that cash flow and growth? Um, I do like to take the investments and, and, uh, double check the actual IRRs. Um, I had a few investments cash out last year, uh, outside of real estate, some of my, uh, private equity, um, and convertible, I have some, some, some random deals and convertible debt. And one of them, um, you know, the gross return was reasonable, but, uh, it was very slow. And, uh, you know, they were touting a 25% return, but in reality, it was really an 8% IRR because, uh, the amount of time it took for uh, the money to come back. So again, in, in, in last year's market, um, you know, a deal that, uh, you know, had some delays and challenges, you know, an eight IRR is not great, but it's certainly, um, wasn't bad. And, uh, you know, I've had some other deals that have done extremely well in the uh, private equity space. So, um, for those that are already in real estate syndications, um, it's a, it's a great time to review, um, you know, all of your syndications over, uh, over the last year, um, check to see where they stand, make sure you've read your reports, make sure you've, uh, um, figured out if, if, if deals are, are projected to cash out in, uh, you know, in 2024. Uh, I know we have a few deals that, uh, you know, originally were going to cash out earlier, but have gotten extended because of uh, what's happening with interest rates. And uh, actually one or two that are, uh, even with the higher rate env environment, are probably just going to sell faster just because of a change in business plan. Um, so it's, it's good to review uh, what, your, what your cash flow is for the year and what, when you're expecting to get cash returned. Um, you know, one of the, the hidden costs, uh, to, to returns is just money sitting idle. And maybe it's a little less, uh, urgent, uh, in, in these environments where, you know, interest rates are still close to five. Um, but, um, you know, you need a plan in place to redeploy capital, uh, especially if it's going to be a profitable exit. So when you have a syndication cash out, uh, especially if it's profitable, you're going to have a capital gain. And, um, you know, it's important to have a plan in place on where to redeploy that capital and, uh, you know, generate some, uh, some paper losses through depreciation. It's a great time to look at your taxes for last year as well. Um, you know, many of you maybe filed early, but I know a lot of you probably filed, uh, September, October towards the deadline. And, uh, you know, maybe you were so busy with your own deals in year end that you didn't really have a chance to digest your taxes. But, uh, you know, take a look at what you paid. And more importantly, take a look at the active number and the passive number. And if you don't understand that, um, get with your CPA and make sure you're clear on, uh, on your active versus your passive income. And, um, if you have, uh, if you have a, you know, a high W2 job, there's only so much you can do. Um, however, there are some options through, uh, through oil and gas or through, uh, the short term rental loophole or through, uh, real estate professional status. But now is the time to start coming up with a plan for 2024. You can't wake up in October and say, how do I lower my taxes? Uh, you know, you really need to start now because if you're going to take advantage of, uh, things like real estate professional status, you need to have your hours documented and you need to be working a plan with your CPA as early as possible. And, um, you know, otherwise you're going to be, uh, going to be out of luck. For those that actually own property, if you are thinking of potentially selling sometime this year, I mean, there's still a shortage of housing, uh, in general, there's a lot of people, um, that are just locked in. I think 70% of the population is locked either below 4% interest rate or has a house completely paid off. So there's still a severe lack of supply. If you own a single family or small rentals as investments and you're thinking of selling, this is a great time to try to plan out your year. Uh, if you're going to do a 1031 exchange, as an example, uh, you only have 45 days to identify a property and six months to, um, uh, you know, to complete the transaction. So it's very important, especially if you're thinking of doing a 1031 into a syndication, which is possible uh, through tenant in common. Um, it's really important to, to have these uh, opportunities lined up, uh, understand which, which sponsors you like, which sponsors you're comfortable working with, which areas you're targeting. Uh, because when these properties come up, there's a limited amount of time 
And uh, once you have your property under contract for sale, you only have 45 days to identify syndication. So you want to have a few different partners um, that have uh, potential deals available so that when you're about to go under contract, you, you know where you could place that money and uh, you could save yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. Generally, the minimum pri- the minimum proceeds for syndication is is. 500,000. Uh, many syndicators, it's 750 to a million. So if it's a really small syndication, if it's, I'm sorry, if it's a really small rental property, if you're selling for 100,000, probably not a fit for a 1031 exchange into a syndication. But, uh, you know, if you have amassed a, you know, a million dollar plus uh, portfolio and, and you're selling, um, a syndication can be a great option to uh, go a little more passive, get into a slightly larger, more institutional property. And uh, you know, with with active, sophisticated institutional level management, uh, it's a different ball game than than schlepping around dealing with a uh, you know a single family or a few two family houses. And uh, the last thing is, is to to really take a look again at, at the, your overall goals. Uh, if you're looking to uh, you know join the fire movement, the financially independent retire early, um, try to back into you know to what your number is and, and how close you are to it. Where are your assets? What what, uh, what, it, you know, what is your growth trajectory? What is your passive income? Um, I think a lot of people get caught up on that whole get to a certain dollar number and draw down and withdraw 4% a year. I, I think that's largely a load of crap. If, if, you're, if you uh, invest properly, you should have enough cash flow coming in at well above 4% uh, to the point where you, you shouldn't have to draw down. If, if you invest right with the foresight and planning and, and, and have you know, a 10 to 20 year horizon and, and syndications and uh, real estate investing are a part of your overall strategy, you should be able to build a portfolio that spits off cash flow consistently enough to cover all of your living expenses. And, uh, and at that point, you don't need to be withdrawing down a portfolio. Now, if you've read that book, Die With Zero, and you just want to you know, spend and and and, and blow it all. I mean, so be it. But um, I don't think you should be in positions where you need to play Russian roulette with your life and your savings, where you're, you're worried if you're going to outlive your savings. I think with proper planning, you should be able to avoid that. So, you know, look at your real estate holdings, look at your cash flow, look at your stock portfolio, look at your retirement accounts. And uh, now is the time to make sure they're structured as efficiently as possible. And now is the time to make some plans to invest into real estate syndications and research them. There's a number of conferences coming up and uh, it is a superior way to invest in, in my opinion, the uh, even in challenging times. And, you know, there's some, some headlines of, of some deals that are challenged, but uh, you know, when you look at the last two years, um, if you, had you know just put all your money in the stock market, you've made two percent. But there are plenty of real estate syndications that were spitting off six, seven, eight percent per year consistently, even through this market. Um, anything with fixed rate debt has done extremely well, and uh, you know should yield uh, tremendous returns. Um, there are a, a small minority of deals that had variable rate debt that have some challenges with cash flow. But largely, if the operator is executing on their plan and they're renovating and raising rents, um, many of those deals are, are still going to turn out uh, very well. And uh, you know, in, in the scheme of things, if, if you look at the you know a syndication deal in twenty twenty two, it only needed to beat two or three percent to uh, to beat the stock market. Now, many people were scared last year. Um, you know, negative headlines about rates, um, just overall kind of negativity about the real estate market. But twenty twenty three is one of the best years that I can remember for opportunities in real estate investing with interest rates up. There was, uh, you know, some money kind of, uh, you know, left the market. It was harder to raise money. And, uh, just with the uncertainty of interest rates, uh, there were some really good buying opportunities. The only people that were generally selling either had to sell because of, uh, just issues with their structure and, and, and affordability issues with, with debt, if they had variable rate debt or just life events. Uh, a, a few deals were, uh, estates where, um, uh, a family inherited the property and it was, you know, they'd owned it a long time. They had a very low basis and it was just time to sell. They, they had done well enough. They weren't going to 
try to manage this property as a, as a group of heirs that, uh, you know, really weren't in the business of, of managing property. So, um, you know, a majority of the, the deals that sold were very opportunistic and were very, very good purchases that if they worked with five and a half, six, six and a half, seven percent interest rates, they will work a lot better with three, four or five percent interest rates as, uh, you know, as rates are, are coming down this year. So um, it was a great year to invest. I think 2024, uh, you know, we're in, we're in a new normal. We're, I think we have some stability. The five and a 10 year rate have, have come down to, uh, you know, uh, a reasonable level. And, and the five and a 10 year have not moved nearly as much as the, uh, you know, as the Fed funds rate. That's the one that really moved 5%. Um, but, you know, the five and the 10 year were at, you know, one and a half, two, and now they're at four. So, you know, they've doubled but uh, they haven't went up 5x. And that's largely what, what tracks the long-term trends. So, uh, you know, overall, we're still very bullish on, on real estate. We're continuing to invest in, uh, into real estate syndications in both multifamily, uh, as well as storage, uh, mobile home parks, um, and uh, marina RV parks uh, is, is one of the, the coolest asset classes we found. I know uh, a few other Podcasters and syndicators all have, you know, their one thing that's uh, a little bit uh, out of the norm, whether it's ATM machines, whether it's car washes. Uh, for us, we've really fallen in love with the uh, marinas uh, and the RV parks. It's, uh, I think it's a great asset class. It's mom and pop owned largely. So, uh, you know, our partners are buying off of uh, families that have generally owned them a long time. And, um, you know, it's, it's generally an affluent crowd. If you can afford a boat, it's usually a, a luxury expense. Um, so, you know, while a recession may have a slight concern, it's usually, uh, you know, someone who's buying a boat, it's, uh, you know, part of their entertainment budget. And even if, even if we're in a bit of a recession, it's, uh, you can drive to your Marina as opposed to flying to Turks and Caicos. So, um, I think it's, uh, you know, recession resistant and, uh, you know, the RV park uh, side of it for those that have RV parks that that's booming. And that's part of the, uh, the, you know, the gray wave, if you will, of baby boomers, uh, you know, retiring, some of them move to Florida, some of them buy an RV. So I think it's extremely well positioned and we're, we're excited about this, uh, moving into 2024. And, uh, you know, lastly, we're excited about our partnership with, uh, Spectre Capital. Um, I actually, um, uh, still sit on their credit committee and, uh, you know, very close with the ownership team there. And, um, you know, given it's much harder to secure financing right now, um, being in the, you know, the hard money or bridge uh, space is, is, is a great place to be. And, um, you know, seeing some really interesting opportunistic loans uh, where, uh, you know, we're coming in and helping out uh, uh, sponsors that, that need money quickly and are willing to pay a high interest rate to uh, get their projects moving. So uh, really excited about that as well. So for 2024, we're, we're still, um, you know, bullish on real estate syndications and uh, short-term debt funds. And, um, you know, those uh, I'm, you know, at least with my money, my portfolio and our funds, uh, you know, we're confident that, uh, you know, we're, we're well positioned to, uh, you know, beat the, uh, beat the S and P uh, over that period of time. So um, that's it for this episode. I would uh, encourage everyone to please like, and subscribe on, uh, on YouTube and uh, pod, uh, podcast platforms of your choice, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, or one of the other apps. And uh, connect with us on social media, both my personal social media account as well as JCAM Investments. And uh, we do have a Facebook group also for the Alternative Investor Mastermind. So check out the Facebook group. And, um, you know, please, uh, it's, uh, it's getting more and more active. So if you have questions, uh, want to reach out, uh, please, uh, please do. So that's about it for this episode. We'll see you on the next one. That's all for this episode of Alternative Investor Mastermind. Now that you know the many alternative opportunities out there all up for the taking, you can finally become ultra-connected and ultra-wealthy. Get more valuable advice from the experts by subscribing to the show at alternativeinvestormastermind.com. Become a winner in the world of passive investing today in alternative investment strategies. Thank you for joining us. Until next time.